And so we're going to start examining connected objects because we have lots of connected objects in the real world, elevators, pulleys, such things. In this case, we have a large mass sitting on a table. And of course, naturally, this is a frictionless system. We have a second mass attached to the first mass by means of this cable over a pulley. And of course, the second mass is under the influence of gravity. So the question here is, find the acceleration of this system and find the tension in the string. I'm just going to assume that we've been given the masses, and of course we're always uh, given the acceleration due to gravity. And what we're required to find out is the acceleration of the whole system, because it is connected, and the force of tension in the string. Now, so some of the things I can already conclude about this system is that the net force on the system is going to be equal to the total mass times the acceleration. So that means that both masses times the acceleration of the system is going to be equal to the net force on the system. I can also naturally conclude that the force of gravity is going to be equal to the size of the second mass times the acceleration due to gravity since the first mass isn't going to enter into the equation. But what about my frame of reference? How am I going to work this out? Even Newton would be questioning exactly how to go about a problem like this. Now to solve this whole issue with the frame of reference, I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking to this system. So let's just get rid of this frame of reference for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that gravity is acting sideways and that these masses are actually arranged just a little bit differently. So there's mass 2, it's connected to mass 1, here's the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is actually going to work to the side. I still have my force of gravity equation. I also know that Newton's law is going to apply just the same. And I'm ready to work with this new frame of reference. And I'm going to choose the left to be the positive direction and the right to be the negative direction. So the force of gravity is providing the acceleration for the total system. So I'm going to work with this equation and do a little bit of rearranging. I am going to take the force of gravity, and I am going to divide by the total mass of the system. And that will effectively isolate acceleration. Now I also know that the total mass of my system is just equal to mass 1 plus mass 2. So, let's substitute that in. I also know that the force of gravity is equal to mass 2 times the acceleration due to gravity. And so I'm going to substitute that into the force of gravity. And now I have a really super nice expression for acceleration. There it is there. Excuse me. And for our last question, we're required to find the force of tension in that string. Now I know that the force of tension is the only force that's accelerating that first mass. So that means that Newton's law applies, of course. So Newton can come in on the job to help us out here. Now, I've already been given the acceleration. I just calculated that. That was a lot of work. And also, I know what m1 is. So all that's really required of me is to find the force of tension. So it's a simple matter of taking mass and multiplying it by the acceleration of the system that I've already calculated. So thank you, Mr. Newton.